Bit of a, an exchange unfolding here at the moment in this final. A seesawing battle between Ethan Ewing and Jack Robinson and, and Ethan getting this one, Pete, during the interview. Yeah, this uh, four turns right here are solid as they come. Bigger wave, bigger section. This one here just tail taps, keeps that speed flying down the line into another beautiful arc. And then the finish, the big down car, feels like to me that this is going to be a number that's going to go into his top two. And if it's above the 7.67, he's going to cut into that lead. Matter of fact, he gets the 8.1, he takes the lead. Beautiful arc there, pushing hard, nice and clean, just the, the top to bottom. There was a couple double pump bottom turns, but oh, with some passion. We like it. Ethan Ewing buzzing after that ride and Luke Egan, we, we don't often see that from the Queenslander. There we go. That's what we love. Yeah, it's packed end to end here watching the finals and that's what we like. We love a passionate crowd. Yeah, the Groms as we'll pick up youthful exuberance from Tatiana Weston Webb swinging on a bomb. There's that bot turn she holds for so long and hits it hard off the top. Look at this section for Tati. Massive hammer. Airdrop to finish as well. An explosion of white water. Just winding through this maneuver. I mean, she's so unafraid to to match these critical, scary sections. I mean, we've seen some of the surfers, uh, uh, Italo this morning on his backhand, getting obliterated by by these waves and hurting himself. Uh, Yago Dora saying that he, you know, he hurt his shoulder. There's so much thump in these sections, and she just looks so unafraid to meet it. And look at the foam on this wave. It was so so hard to t hard to surf, but she just held on and just knew that if she could wait for one of these big stand up critical sections bottom drops out air drops down so hard to just put your foot on the back of the pad and not have a big nose dive <laughs> smash and she did it it was absolutely amazing a nine point ride for tatiana huge number in for tati world champ pete mel and the 11 time world champion kelly slater and we're going to see ethan ewing get things started first here having some kind of year but still chasing that elusive first championship to a win You'd have to like his chances here at Jeffrey's Bay. He's got a nice clean wall standing up here. Big hook off the top. Nice power and acceleration out of that turn as he goes now to the layback jam on his way to a very solid start here in the semis. And the conditions only improving here on finals day as Ethan takes this one way down the line. And it looks like it's going to line up for a bit more on this final section too as he drives up into the lip and hangs on to the finish. Kelly Slater, that was impressive. That's such good surfing. You know, he always bet on himself. They're good. So, um, <laughs> Let's have a little replay of uh, this wave because uh, you absolutely loved it, Kelly. And I could see you just shrugging, just going, what more can you do with it? Yeah, I mean, so far, perfectly surfed. Watch this variety and power right there. Carves it all the way back at the whitewater there. Just lays the hammer down. Um, again, boom, look how clean the rail is and how good the fins are sticking there. A little bit different variety, almost a little tail throw, but he keeps the momentum down line, almost like a layback snap would, where your shoulders are still aimed down line. It cleans up again and boom, almost lets the tail loose there. Almost comes in stuck, but I, I don't know, I'm really interested to see where they go with this because that was such good surfing. But his thing here is that he, you know, we talk about why is he so special and it's his extension through these carbs. I mean, and, and all that water in the, off the rail, it's he extends some, just a little bit more and uh, it showcases that searing part of it. He's accelerating through the maneuver and he accelerates for a longer period of time. And this one here, I mean, mm -hmm. that's just a beautiful, we've seen this layback snap a lot. How good did that feel? So good. How good did that one feel? <laughs> so alive. The extension is there, Pete, but too, the, the compression out of each of those maneuvers just to, to recoil. Uh, look at the, the upper body rotation, and he always gets that full redirection of the board happening through these maneuvers. And I mentioned before, he hasn't gone into the excellent range just yet. His highest oh, number in this event so far is a 7.93. I think he might be ramping up at the perfect time here. Saving oh. it for finals day, huh? <laughs> Again, I don't know how you really critique that. You just talk about how, how well he surfed that wave. Um, Yago had a, a glitch in the early part of his wave. Yeah, there's someone at the keyhole waiting with a board and a, a leash. So, uh, yeah, he stopped running now, so we'll see what happens. It's just, there's a big set coming right now, so I think he's just taking his time. He's realising that he can't jump on the rocks right now and go. As we see, it's low on a big one on the outside. Oh, big turn off the top two for the Brazilian. As he glides through a transition hit here, now looking just really to, to size up a big finish on this ride. And he is trying to chase down this score. Here's a the 7.93. This thing's doubling up now as Italo climbs up into the pocket again, bashes it, falls out of the sky. And again, goes oh. to the lip and he hangs onto it. And there is the double fist pump. 
And that's exactly what he needed, a couple of big sections. And that's just happening. This time, he gets the outside work done. I mean, that was a beautiful backhand hook. Uh, he sets up this next section here by carving it back, but waiting for the steepest part of it, tags it once again, gets some drift. So two solid moves on the outside. This feels like the best wave of the heat. Um, again, needing a 7.93 to turn it. Um, you know, there's a question there. He's asking the judges. I mean, here, this bid part is the only slow part, but he's loading it up, seeing, or he's not loading up, but the, he sees that it's going to load up, and this is a, the media section of this wave. Too beautiful. This one here, specifically, is just hammering that section with so much speed through the car. Crazy stuff there. And he gets out of there. And you have watch. a look at these final two turns. Big section, and, and we know how, you know, how much damage <laughs> this has done to people over the, the course of the last couple of days. And so commitment and degree of difficulty is usually looking at the section you're doing the maneuvers. And that one had so much water in it. And he was comes out with speed and then goes straight into the second. The two turn combos. Look, this one's going into the, to the skyrocket. He's going to turn the heat. Strata is a, a goofy footer. It must bring a tear to your eye. Yeah, a little bit off kilter as we see Tati. Second wave of the set shaping up nicely. Western Webb with a load of speed here. Look at this section for a hard off the bottom. Really nice whipping carve under the lip at speed again. Just dragging that tail and those fins through a really powerful motor and lip. And loads of white water here. She'll deal with it pretty well. Tatiana has gone a long way down the point here. She might get another section stand up here. Western Webb, another big turn for her. And she's in rhythm on this wave. She's really centered on that board and does really good work. So going close to the excellent range of the first couple of numbers. And a but cool to see her. I mean, look at that bottom turn, that fundamental. That was Aki-esque right there. Wow, just such solid surfing from Tatiana. You could tell she's got so much confidence in her equipment. That sharp eye looking so good and comfortable under her feet. Big smile on her dial as well. <laughs> it's know. super aggressive, but she's enjoying herself at the same time. She wow. is loving this absolute classic wave in full flow. Western Webb attacking so hard. Look how far wow. that back foot is on that tail pad. We've seen a little bit of that happen. Someone is deep inside the barrel and emerges to a massive roar from the home crowd support. Jordy Smith just pouring his way out of a barrel and then into the lip. Hits it nicely, gathering speed again. As ever, powerful and smooth at the same time. Jordy Smith into the lip. Really nicely done. A ton of ways, Jordy making that wave selection pay off, Rosie. Oh, yeah, and Jordy straight off the bat, pulls under the hood, just really maximizing the time under the lid there. There's was a little bit of a dirty entry into that barrel, but still just so deep and undercover. But I also like the fact that he is just uh, so in tune with this wave and finding more scoring potential on the inside. Speaking of energy from the crowd, the was is down, sampling the vise. What have you got, Strider? It's kind of energy out of the crowd when you see the, the waves completed by Jordy and that, that just feeling. I mean, look at that lip line float, just comes down, just barely pulls it off, but then looks in. And that right there is the roar of the lion. <laughs> that was just amazing. I just love that feeling and that vibe. As we see now, Italo on the outside. Unbelievable backhand snap. I think one of the most high-risk turns that we've seen on that outside section yet yeah, just fell out of the sky and still has the momentum as he tucks into the tube. Will he come through this one? He's driving and he reappears, hangs onto it. On his way to a monster score, trying to get rid of an 8.17. And he knows it's good. There's the salute. And we're going to see it. I mean, there it is. Watch this first section. And that was exactly that, right there in the most critical part of the wave. Uh, and it's still loaded up with a bunch of energy here. And he's attacking it one more time. He somehow just keeps that cat-like ability to stay on top of his board. And especially when that whole barrel filled up with water and he slides out of it, no worries, and gets to the finish. That was so solid. 9.17 is the number for Italo. Have a look at this in super slow-mo. Just incredible. Upside down through the roof. Just knocked the top right off it. I mean, if you're the epitome of um, backhand snapping car, I mean, it's everything involved there. There was a carve, there was a snap, there was a drift. And looking to bring all that energy into the later rounds. Meanwhile, out in the action right now, Samuel Pupo, hard carve from him, just tightens up that, puts himself back in the pocket to set up, a little snap turn from him. As he goes past Nat Young, just with an absolute ton of speed, and he'll look to pull in here.
and he'll weave underneath a really nice section. Does well to negotiate at the bottom of the wave. It's not an easy place to maintain the speed and get a big throaty section for Popo. Who'll come out of that. So a big double tube, and he absolutely loves it. We do too. I tell you what, there's more surfing on this wave. Another really nice snap with the release of the fins from Pupo, just tearing this wave apart. Brilliantly surf wave from Samuel. How can he not be featuring in your one of your top favorite surfers to watch? I mean, Sammy Pupo. I love the kind of lean back claim as he like stalks back to uh, after getting out of that barrel. I'm just loving the way that this guy surfs and the way that he's approaching um, competitive surfing too. He's keeping it refreshing and fun in the moment. Sammy Pupo just loving his day job at the moment. Absolute textbook technique here as he goes under the hood, going warp speed. Three surfers down the end, getting eyeballs on this, looking straight into the barrel as Samuel <laughs> Pupo comes flying out. Absolutely loves it. And he knows he's on his way to a good number here. Let's see exactly where that goes. Judges again with the work cut out. Meanwhile, Robinson, is he inside this? Is he coming out? He is. Jack Robinson is absolutely flying through a barrel here. Shut the front door. Jack Robinson points at the panel. He ain't done yet. Big, meaty carve down again. And yeah, just belting it for good measure one more time. How about that stuff from Jack oh Robinson? Oh my God. Because it was all about quality on this one, Rosie. Yeah, tricky takeoff there from Jack. He paddles in hard, digs that back arm in for the layback. So first maneuver, really strong. That kind of goes through the motion. Yeah, looking for opportunities. And obviously as the more the heats go by, the better read they get on this swell. And in with an entry here, Dora. Then he'll swing one, just over seven to go in this. What's he got? We see him on a steep wall here. Off the bottom, bangs one. Nice and steep. A little drift in that turn as well. Again, hits it nice and hard. Really critical in the pocket. Judges want to see that. And it is a dynamic pocket, absolutely racing away. And he finds himself some cover. Gets in a real throaty tube. He'll go again here. Pulling in, grabbing the rail. Yago Dora streaking through a backhand barrel. Oh. Wow. Makes it out and goes floppy. <laughs> Loves it. Just as he gets that exit, got that little extra section. Disappeared for a while. We weren't sure. And then he comes out. He's delighted. We're waiting to see what our panel make of it. But brilliant surfing from the Brazilian goofy foot. Yago Dora with a tough heat against the yellow jersey of Toledo. And asked a question of 716. This is what he had to say in reply, just slotting into that beautiful run in tube section. It's been so fun to see the goofy footers. I think we've really obliterated that stigma of, uh, you know, the, the goofy footers not being able to handle J. He swept the European leg and he's also a pipe master. Medina hard off the bottom. Gets that jam on the shoulder and now the wall's opening up. Big flow, pulls it perfectly. Nice, healthy-looking backhand carve. Medina under the lip, looking solid. Back to the lip line to connect one more time. Looks like he wants to pull in. It's wide open. Beats that section. Gabriel Medina with an unbelievable barrel through supers. Strider Wazilewski, that was incredible. You got to be kidding me. What a specimen. This guy is in just an amazing conductor of the orchestra of the ocean. I just can't even believe what this guy's putting together right now. That was amazing. That thing funneled out so hard. And when he pulled up into the ball, grabbing the rail, just speed lining, that was just incredible to thread the needle like that. That was, wow. You gotta get two tens to beat this guy. And even then he's gonna come back and even that up. And then it's come, gonna come down to the third scoring ride. And he's gonna get that as well. Let's have a look. First what, first maneuver, big snap under the left. This is what I like. I love that maneuver right there. Just that slip line, speed float, the snap. What a combo. And again, look how quick the transition is between those turns. Upside down under the lip again. Three falls down. Now he starts to reassess the situation. What am I going to do? Of course I'm going to get the best backhand tube the entire event and come flying out the end. I'm, I'm kind of upset now they didn't give him the 10 for that. <laughs> There's been a few thrown, 977 on the average. Look at the turns though, Joe. Look at the, pos the body position, the speed. You know, when you're going that fast, you kind of have to pull back a little bit. Not this guy. This guy just goes, you know what? I'm going to go upside down with all that speed. I'm going to show exactly what I've got. 
And i uh, tell you what, what he's got is uh, some incredible riding here. And again, grabs a rail, pulls into the barrel. One of the better tubes we've seen this event on his backhand. You know, Italo thought he had it, started the heat with a 9.10, and now finds himself with one minute to go needing two new waves. 19.5 required by Italo Ferreira. And just so many opportunities out there for Gabriel to choose from. Medina taking off with some speed. Big section breaking at his heels. Now going through the lift line and crushes it. Avoiding that wild lift line again. Searing into his second car. Passing Italo a little bit behind the wedge, which could be a good thing. Big vertical airdrops. Right into a oh, heavy finishing wow. move. Medina hangs on. <laughs> Strider, that was one of the best backhand turns I've seen completed at Jeffreys Bay. Holy smokes, the guy is on fuego right there. The boys loved it from the peanut gallery down the line here. Let me tell you, you can see that set coming. I watched him struggle into that first one, kick out, thinking, what is going on? And then he ends up on that wave. What a talent that guy has. Gabriel Medina and Italo, what a clash. This is their first final that they've ever had together as we rewind the tape. Yeah, you know what? If Italo had awaited, this could have been his wave because Gabriel used that priority on the on the first one. Massive opening maneuver. You can see the solid size of this wave. Sneaks under the lip and you can see the crease now starting to form in this wave. Gabriel catches a little bit of a rail, but then watch how it offers him this little peak situation. Snaps it off the top, three, four drop, and then right here. That's about as radical as you're going to see as a finishing maneuver for Gabriel Medina. 9.10 for Idlo Ferreira. I'm not surprised if this is going to be a 10. But it's all the other stuff, the foundation work. We sincerely improved. Idlo. Idlo on a good size wave here. Covering a lot of face. And now driving up into the first section. Beautiful turn there. Well placed. Maintains control and doesn't wait before getting back up to the top and giving it another bash. This way flattening out for a moment, but he knows he's got a lot more wall to work with down the line. Grabs that rail for a moment. Beautiful turn there. <laughs> Dropping out the lip with every manoeuvre. And again, just pulls it up under the lip. Hammering towards the end section. Oh! And he wants to finish here. And he likes the feel of it. Stays on his feet. Cool down, he's saying. <laughs> we got more to come. 17 minutes to go. What a semi-final flash. <laughs> Fantastic answer from Italo. We've seen the big set waves be rewarded handsomely all day. There is a point of difference. And that was a big set wave. You start to feel it as a surfer because it's such a beautiful sight. First one on the replay. Nice big wrap. Showed great understanding of this wave and where to be on it. First turn into the lip. Three-quarter face bottom turn. This one higher and more flaring. Throws it into a carving snap. It gets a little bit of downtime here, but look what's coming up right down the line. He knows it straight up. Beautiful oh. backhand re-entry. And again, wow. This is the time. This is exactly the answer back he needed. And into that closing maneuver. Where did the judges go? That's exactly what I was about to say. Where did <laughs> the judges go? This, this was huge. Every turn he fell out of the sky button, and it was a bigger wave. The other thing that we've got to remember, we, we've spoken about it earlier in the contest, watching this wave live, taking the full oh! scope of uh, the, the swell line as it rolls down the point. You see how much distance is covered on the bottom turns. You see that yeah. wave from, from trop to, to lip. And he hammered every section that popped up in front of him. Oh, I think this is maybe going to eclipse Felipe's nine-point ride. Let's take another look at the 9.5. Yeah, let's have a look here. First wave of the set, nice and clean. Wind's gone offshore. Carissa hooks into that first manoeuvre, getting the board ready. Up through the lip again, showing some variety. Big snap again off the top, off the bottom, and straight into the barrel. Beautiful transition. Comes out nice and clean. Carissa Moore starting to light it up. She knows she's got it. Joanne DeFay is looking sharp. She's in good form at the moment. Carissa not taking any chances. Leaving no stone unturned. She pulls into the barrel and comes out flying through that next section. Yeah, you were just talking about it, Kai. And I mean, a 5-5-1 more than doable as we see uh, Geordie up and riding. 
Lovely power hack. This is what we want to see from the South African. Just really going to the big solid rail work. Gets a beautiful vertical whip. Another one just puts the punishment on the end of that one. And suddenly Geordie is looking awake. It's, it's, it's really interesting to see how his momentum and energy has built through the seat. And Tatiana Weston Webb will get the one behind it. Tati winds up. Clean little backside draw through the open face right on top of Sage. She'll belt it off the roof. Total control. Third little down carve and Tati line up the lip. Crushes it. Reset in that front foot. Huge wind up. Laid off the top and she's controlling all these re-entries. Incredible right just to stay on her feet. After we see Sage Erickson getting hung up on the top. Tati knew she really wanted to capitalize on that mistake. And judges are going to love that commitment going off the top multiple times to the inside corner. A good little back up there for Sage. Let's have a look at Tatiana's first turn. Straight up into the left. The second turn just jamming it right over Sage Erickson. Free fall drop getting nice and low after that maneuver. Nice wide solid stance from Tatiana and that just allows her to really produce big turns. And again, that free fall drop from Tatiana Weston Webb. No wonder the judges love that wave. Now that I look at it back, there was just maneuver after maneuver. There was no holding back. She lit that wave up, Joe. So uh, it looks like he's taking that advice on in the opening stages. No, and I think that there's confidence that it come from a, you know two guys like that telling him, first off, but also seeing the scores that he's been producing. Here we go, though. Here comes the reply from Felipe Toledo. The Brazilian, the new world number one, opens up with a searing frontside arc, getting right back into the bowl. Starting to square up, finding those transition floaters to get himself back down the line. Already so much damage done on this wave and loading up to something big on the inside here. Mixes up his approach, climbs up onto the roof. <laughs> I don't know how many turns we was on that wave, but I'm guessing around 10. It all just happened so fast. Oh, man, the acceleration he carries is just unbelievable. It's paid off in the long run because he is able to utilize that speed in such positive ways. Look at this car all the way around, spray flying everywhere. I mean, so much variety in all of these different styles of turns. Again, he tweaks that. The board going back the opposite direction each and every time. And how's this wave? I mean, it gave him such great opportunity. Right back into it again and explodes on that closeout move. You'd have to say one of the better waves we've seen all day today as he drives through it one more time. I mean, he shredded that wave. It wasn't the wave itself and the size that we'll probably see this number go up into the excellent range. It's all the different style of turns he does and all the acceleration he carries through. Takes a <laughs> selfie on the way out. Flying down the line is Griffin Cola Pinto. Big car drills it off the lip. A massive oh. float right in front of Igarashi. <laughs> and the young guns from California are putting on a show, posturing to the panel, and enjoying perfection here at Jeffrey's Beck. Is he going to do the run around? Does he need a board change? Let's have a look at his wave, though. Uh, Griffin, nice little kickstart. Comes around the section. Waiting for it. Taking his time. Getting his feet set. Now he starts to look serious. Through the lip there. Gets a nice little bit of drift. Hits the brakes. Pulls up under the hood. Nice little cover up. Now he needs to hit the gas up and around that section as well. Bangs it up through the lip again. So Griffin on his way to an absolute crack. At beautiful down carve. And again through the lip. So many maneuvers on edge the entire wave. Coming off, uh, you know, coming into South Africa in good form. Watch it waves out the back, and it's Kanoe Garashi's turn, representing Japan. Going for a solid vertical blast out the back. Really leaning into that body torque, change up off the top. Burning some speed down the line, it jams it hard off the lip. Another quick snap right into a bottom turn. Beautiful flow through the floater and a quick one off the coping again. Fin throw reverse for Igarashi. 
Also, Cano's wave. What was the major difference between these two pots? Well, just the size of the wave, Joe. I mean, uh, Jeffrey's Bay right now is absolutely on fire. You want those bigger set waves, you can see his better transition, more open face to do the big turns. But Kanoa, beautiful snap right there. And again, through the lip, series of beautiful bottom turn, top turn combos. And finishes strong. He thought it was over, but no, there's more. Goes to the air, nice little reverse. He says, yep, did you get the shot? Seabash is getting a little caught behind there, Pete. And uh, an opportunity lost because he was on his way to a pretty decent number. Some solid turns on the outside for the Hawaiian. Here we go. Felipe looking to lock in a solid second score. 7.73 on his first wave. And he just rips that one off the top. Still keeps that flow down the line. A longer, more drawn-out version of the same manoeuvre. And he is really tagging this one. Not done yet. Bashes it again. Excellent score on the way for Toledo, who's putting it all on the line and has more room to move. Huge flow to finish. Let's have a look at the replay. Felipe Toledo looked over his shoulder for a moment, Pete, and then really locked into some huge turns. Oh, just craziness. I mean, and he saw this wave start to turn the corner and go into that car park section, and this is where the wave loads up. I mean, there, the down car, and just that one there, he extends that arm through the waist, driving through it into the lip. I mean, this poor wave, annihilated. Look at him go. Every time, getting loose. Just the unfortunate fall right there. Other than that, that was a gigantic number, and it still is going to be a huge number. Put him off balance, though, and he couldn't hang on. Right behind him, Griffin now has the opportunity to shut this one down. Casual pace, but lots of speed. Now starting to really draw his turns out. Steep section here, gets his board almost vertical, but spins the tail and sets up the barrel on the inside. A well-constructed wave so far. Lots more to give down the line. And he goes to the layback, mixing it up, looking and feeling like the best wave of the heat. <laughs> Go for sure. Of course, he has to come up and watch these two arcs right in front of him. I mean, right there, he felt like it was a little conservative, but he made up for it with these two beautiful rail down carve to tail release, free falling with the lip, and then, oh, I'll just did a little cheeky barrel. Holds the line, gets in that tube, maximizes the barrel time, and then one more different style of turn. That's the variety. I really feel like the, the fin throw, the slide across the, the top of the wave, midway through that ride, was one of the best moves we've seen in the event. Just such a big point of difference to all the carving that we've seen. Yeah, and it's, it's high risk. It's not easy to do, you know, especially when you want to keep that momentum down the line, and yet still getting two more maneuvers after that. There it is. One of the best numbers of the event. The single best ride of the contest so far for Griffin Cola Pinto. Jordy Smith falls on the first opening ride. A short one there. That gives Toledo some room to work out this lineup. Passing Jordy for his first section to work with. It's a nice, clean, rapid cutback. Toledo off the bottom now. Keeps that connection with that high line wrap. Nice top turn carve. Easy pace. Wall's growing, and he'll throw another big down carve. It's going to start to get hollow for Toledo. Slamming on the brakes. The first vision of the morning goes to the Brazilian from Ubatuba. Stalls for another big section, nice and deep. Toledo has plenty of room to come flying out. Drives oh. off the top again with a huge hammer. That could be another chance. <laughs> and what a way to kick off finals day. Here we go. All right, it's taking off. This is your shot at it. Needs an 8.9. Just has to surf this wave like he did his last. Goes all out on the first turn. Again, swooping, opening up those arms and really digging hard on the rail. Off the bottom, into the lip now. Just a transition turn there. So much pressure being applied to the tail by both surfers at the moment. A clean finish. Red likes the feel of it. But let's watch Fred's again, and uh, this first turn, he lays into it, drips, oh, just somehow, and then comes out with speed once again, and that's a, a different type of turn than we've seen from him. That's what he needed to do. He's gonna try and show us something different. You know, this part, a little behind, but that I think was okay. 
If he gets there, it'll be on the strength of those last numbers. I mean, it was perfectly served. Well, the number is in, and the judges ate it up. They love the commitment on this first turn. He drifted that tail. It's another 10-point ride. Unbelievable. The heat is not over. There is 40 seconds remaining here. Frederico Moraes, though, dropping a 10. I, I, mean, just, I actually thought just the end of this rider, it didn't come off, but he certainly dug in hard on those, those first couple of moves. I mean, uh, you, you got to give it to him. He's already loaded up uh, enough pace to let go of another big hit straight after. Here we go, Fred, trying to find his way out of combo. Again, so speedy through that first hit. And he rages through a couple more cars down the line. Bashing the lip there, just tweaking the tail a little bit. Nice big slice there. Surfing so well, this rookie. The only rookie left in the mix here. His second quarterfinal appearance this season. And he gets a big finish on the inside. Likes the feel of it. Willie really great combination with that ride. Well, he needs to be over an 8.58 to get there. And a little bigger wave. And there was no mistakes in that wave at all. So, I mean, uh, it had that bend in it. So, again, great wave choice for him. He knew he was going to have great pace. He's going to get those first moves off. I mean, look at that. Just gouges into that first turn and the second. And look at how clean his rails are. They just never grab. He never looks like he's going to be behind it. Beautiful the way he was able to get a little different maneuver there again. But that arc, oh. look at that. He just lays into it. He ripped in the fourth round. But this is uh, my favorite wave I've seen from Frederico in this event. I mean, you would say yes. After watching the replay, I would say yes. He's going to take himself out of combo. Let's get some uh, insight from Strider, watching closely the technique and just the body positioning of these two competitors. Yeah, I love the split screen that you guys had up early. And watching Federico Marias here, he's just beautiful surfing on the rail, really long and lean. He's got that big, beautiful turn and, and just really flowing through everything. I think the point of difference here between the two. You can do type those types of moves, those drifting moves. Here goes Florence, using his priority on this one. So far, so good. A big opening turn. Second turn, even better. Throwing buckets at the moment. As he just pivots on that tail, kicking those fins free, but maintaining control and a good down-the-line flow. And there is another huge hit, leaning so hard on the tail of his board. Needs a 7.4 to get the lead. Gets a finish on the inside. Looked pretty good, didn't it? I would say that he's probably going to better than nine. Is just the release in John's tail, the, well, the whip. And the explosiveness. I think that, you know, when you see his maneuvers, they're just, they have that pop, that, that flare, everything about it, it's undeniable, you know, it's pretty unique to John. Uh, you know, he had a lot of variety too. I mean, he's got those long arcs, but I think, again, understanding that that type of move is going to be his point of difference against Federico. Very long way for John. And of course, he's going to finish on his feet. Even with that tricky last section, he just gave it a little bit extra. Yeah, a little, yeah. A little karate chop. I mean, look at that. So the, the approach of that, too, was very about 11 o'clock, you know, so it wasn't quite 12, but it, that's going a bit more critical. You know, when you can start out in the face, you know, around that 10 o'clock, it makes it easier. Whereas he, that two-turn combo, you know, again, mixing it up, showing the explosive drifting, you know, and I think his equipment is part of it, too, because he can gouge that tail in. It's a little bit narrower. It bites in. But have a look at this set, Joe. Standing nice and deep. Hasn't been able to switch his boards out yet. Blitz is the first section. Big windup. There's a solid wrapping maneuver. Absolutely flying now into his third hack. Stretches out the carve. This thing growing through the inside section. Beautiful top turn. Pulls into a healthy look at Cavern. Oh. And fights his way out. Mick wants more. 
Perfect positioning. That wave spits him out the first section and he comes out of there. Wow. The start of the heat, still turning in a 9.8 on this bomb. Yeah, what a wave for Mick Fanning. I mean, it was just a matter of time, wasn't it, Joe? Uh, jo Joan Daru dropped a 7.5 on Mick. So Mick knew he needed to crank it up. He needed something special, a 6.33 on his opening wave. And, and then this. I mean, this is just a match made in heaven, as we talked about before. The style, the pace that Mick Fanning has here at Jeffreys Bay. Look at that turn, driving through that first section. And uh, snuck out the end, but then wasn't finished with that. Just perfect position and yet again. A lot of people were finding it hard to get in and out of that tube here this morning. We saw quite a number of barrels uh, unmade. So uh, Mick Fanning just really nailing that one. Strider, how'd that look when he just got this section to unload on him? Unbelievable. This inside barrel that he had was just absolutely a keg. The thing just absolute stand-up, beautiful tube just looking for the exit the whole time and just slips right out the doggy door for the beautiful finish and he did it with a big front side air reverse he's up once again loading up for something huge has speed and he's going to go to the air again up <laughs> and he sticks it. beyond full rotation and again goes to the air. you are kidding me wow two huge alley oops both unbelievable. I think it lacked a little variety. <laughs> <laughs> Very repetitious. <laughs> oh man, I am goosebumps <laughs> from head to toe. That's the way he stopped those things. He's still going. Oh, that is unbelievable, out. dude. Unbelievable. It was mind blowing. It really was. And it, I, I love the fact that we're telegraphing it here and that he just delivers once again. Look at this. The rotation so quick and how he lands right there in the middle of the face and has a ton of speed and sets it up for one more. Oh. oh. I mean, the landing was silky on the first, but the second one, he went so high. He did. And, you know, and then what? He finishes here. I mean, at this point, just kick out and start clapping, <laughs> my son. I mean, you already have the 10, but nope. He wants to keep giving us more and more and such a showman. I mean, all three of these guys are full showmen. But Felipe, the conditions today are right up his alley. Wow. It's, it is crazy how uh, how well he sticks these moves. Look at his feet. They're well, look at, so planted. Yeah, and this is a, a completely different type of aerial that you have when you go the opposite direction. You know, in this one, again, using the wind, but the pop. See, that's his latest edit that he dropped was the pop and that's what he has that he has the best pop of anybody and look at that how high it is almost over rotates but has the ability to stay on his board somehow his head's dug into the wall and comes out unbelievable here with his wife and his baby girl they would be watching on i'm sure just in amazement like the rest of us a 10 point ride you know it really was a an 18-point wave. It, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, and that just goes to show why we really have I mean, of the 10s, right, that's that's almost 10 point more points higher than any other 10. I mean, you look at the angle here again. I mean, just, in, you know, he is able to understand the conditions and go, okay, look at this. I've got the perfect win to set the board up in, and he does it with such ease. Oh, how far up? Who knows? Let's have a look at mix seven. <laughs> well, he's climbing into seven, so let's have a look at it. Beautiful searing maneuver from Mick. Changed up his equipment, Joe. Got the inside info. It's a, it's a channel bottom on the advice of Fletchy. Let's see if it pays off. Beautiful turn there from Mick. He draws off the bottom again. Another searing maneuver. What a heat we've got on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Are you not entertained? And as we click to another camera angle, Mick Fanning just absolutely slashes that one and <laughs> says, yep, that's a seven. I liked it a little better than a seven. More waves on the way, Potts with priorities, the world champ, John John Florence, deep bottom turn, way back hack, right in front of the oncoming section. Now just stretching it out, waiting for a second maneuver, a big down carve wrap with the extension. He's got some room to slowly emerge out in front. He'll lay low. He wants this thing to just open wide up, standing tall in the pit. Florence has some room to move. Oh. Now 
finishing oh. with a big layback dagger in the closeout wow. session. At Jeffrey's Bay, Freddie got started during the break. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, it is just non-stop waves. I've seen some of the biggest sets of the day come through in that last heat, so uh, it is no sign of slowing down. Frederica Marais loves this kind of condition set. It's just like home as uh, we see him flying down the line. He's got his work cut out, but I'll tell you what, this kid doesn't mind coming up against the big names, especially in these conditions. He's a big boy and he handles it well, just like that. Beautiful searing maneuver from Frederica Marais and backs it up again. Just a series of beautiful turns, combination of major maneuvers, speed management, and then drives through the inside, a little bit of a head dip there. But uh, finishing off nicely is the young fella from Portugal. What a wave to start the heat. Here we go, live action. Julian out the back once again. Jeremy's there too. Has a look at this section. Ducks under that curtain. Drives out onto the open face now. Draws that turn out. Up into the pocket of the wave once again. Big speed calves are off the top. Wilson looking for a steeper wall so he can start to mix things up. Sets up the tube on the inside though. And punches through the curtain as the wave tries to clamp on him. This way it's holding open now though. And he goes into the second section. Still rolling through this one. The hands go up. <laughs> I mean, you look at the size of this wave too. We'll look at the size. I mean, way out on top of the point. He took off very deep. He made sure that he was going to take off on this outside section. Beautiful arc here. Look at this. Big canvas. Just arcs it all the way through. Again, carrying a ton of speed throughout the entire maneuver. And then he sets up this inside section going, okay, wait, wait, wait. I will pull right in. The second barrel section, though, is money. Look at that. Just a little check bait into it. And then three double into that double section. And, of course, comes out. And that's it. Give me 10. That's what I want. As we see, more waves rolling through here. Just under five minutes to go. Let's see what Jordy can do. Can he give us a perfect heat? Bit of a sleepy start to this ride, but he hammers that section to project out into this bowl and smashes it once again. Nice big tail slide, so mixing things up, showing great variety now. Let's throw it down the strider as Jordy pulls up under the lip. Wow, are you kidding me? This inside racetrack and another barrel. Crowd's going wild down here. Huge float rooftop. And he rides out of it, ladies and gentlemen. Best seats in the house down here on the beach. The boys are going mad. The crowd's going mad. This is the best ever. A little bit off the water and, uh, and giving himself a kind of a quiet environment to be able to set up, set up his day. He goes to Sharon's, but these sections here where he's connecting with the lip, projecting down the line, and then that layback to this tail slide, right back to back on the outside section, showing us something different. I love this stuff. I mean, he, again, he's just building confidence. He already had a ton of confidence, but when you start putting together waves like this, where you just double barrel, tail slide, and then this float to finish, and then the crowd going nuts, we could see a perfect heat. I had a feeling. And the numbers rolling through at the moment are indicating then he might just get there. Have a look at this move. Well, and there, that's that extra, right? Giving us something we've never seen before. The tail slide on a solid set wave. He'd already done three solid turns before that and then gets barreled twice. And then the Hail Mary float on the, on the bricks. Well, I think that that last move is what is going to seal the deal for Jordy here. And he does get himself a perfect 10 point ride, ducking into the barrel, Pete. But so many points in this last move. That is as committed as you can get on that end section. So that, that's the seventh perfect heat ever? Would you say it's seventh, right? Either way, it's for Jordy's first, where he's able to pick it up. And it was like, I mean, look at this wave. It's a, a three footer, or four footer off the takeoff, but he knew it was going to grow down the line. Again, the second wave. He even gets a beautiful arc to start this wave off and knows it's just gonna line up perfectly through this inside section and here's the barrel. I mean, pulls in, you see right there, pumps up, a little squirt up, another pump up, and then the thing still keeps railing off. And of course, the crowd goes nuts. And at that point, you're just like, Leo had to watch that as well. I mean, he came out of the hole with speed. Uh, you can't deny a wave like that. Some of the best we've seen so far. Nothing better than watching Jordy Smith surf J-Bay. The best we've seen so far.
nothing better than watching Jordy Smith surf J Bay, unless you're uh, in a jersey surfing in the same heat. <laughs> So Leo true. had uh, the worst seat in the house to watch the end of that ride. Well, yeah, and he, he just came off of a really good wave. You know, that was another solid, excellent score for him. But uh, at this point, you're going to see probably a perfect ride get posted, and, uh, and that's it. It's going to be really tough to come back now. And it is unanimous across the board from the judges panel. As we take a look at the whole wave here, he's straight in, stalls it, and he is barreled. And he is great with the speed control. That's why we saw the crowd react the way it did. So hard to do to slow down on your forehand like that. One of the techniques by the Hopgoods, double arm drag. You see that technique, technique being used by Felipe Toledo. And of course, the finish, always important here at J-Bay. You see again in the barrel on the foam ball, slowing down by putting both arms Nice work, Felipe. Let's take a look at this uh, with the slow-mo. You know, as he drops in, again, arm drag, arm drag, then puts the second hand in. And at this point, when he starts to come out, he's stalled again. You can see, Pete, that, that back foot coming off the tail pad, just moving a little further forward. What's he trying to achieve there? Well, keeping the plane of the board up. You know, you, when you put your foot back there it makes the board a lot more sensitive but you can move forward on the board it allows you to control that speed a little easier even using your feet as a, as a you know, gas pedal to or brake even to slow yourself down and it also stabilizes you when you move up on the board like that and there isn't too many competitors on the championship tour that, that move their feet around on their the deck of their board as much as Felipe has been right well you just know that those first turns are so important in, in order to get into the excellent range and score so high you can't have any errors well, cop a look at this wave. Unbelievable. Standing up beautifully for the Brazilian. As he just continues to show us great variety on this forehand. So three different moves already. Starting to pace himself now. Able to commit to that move as the wave slowed down. And just bashing away relentlessly at this wall. Now stalling for the barrel. And finishes the wave with a clap to himself. It's dropped from the panel, but two tens came out and Sebastian's best wave in that last heat. It averaged down to 9.83, but this is even better, this wave. It is. You know, that cutback, he was able to transition, get the board back the other direction two times in a row, and then tags the lip. Haven't seen a lot of that. Fades this next turn, but look at this. Big arc. I mean, completely done right there in that top half of the wave. And again, I mean, those were two beautiful, those, some of the best turns. And then, just for good measure, We'll get barrel. Good barrel too. Well, oh, he loves it. That's got to feel good. You know, whether you've got a jersey on or not, that's just a, a magic ride. You look at it, it did kind of move out. It wasn't super steep on that outside section, but that's what allowed him to really lay into these turns. That lower tide moving off a little deeper water. But look at this one, just lays into it. And just stalls for the barrel. And the finish. Let's see if Kanoa can answer. I think he's got it in him. Look at that again. Straight up into it. Gets the board all the way back with the nose pointing the opposite direction at J-Bay. Anytime you can do that, you know you've chosen the right way. Two times in a row, and then there connects with the lip. Amazing variety. I mean, those were three absolutely different turns. Then goes back into the big arc car, but that time does that really high up in that top portion of the wave, the steepest part of the wave. And look at the canvas. Uh, realm, but it, it definitely looked like Kolohe was uh, coming out of that wave, and we've seen a lot of waves finish down there, but here's just quite uh, wave that Sebastian had. <laughs> he found the exit. No one, uh, no one dropped in on the whole. Oh, I mean, in this wave right there is exactly the type of wave that he needed to do to answer to Leo Fioravanti's first wave. I mean, look at this one. He completed it with barrels, bashes, looked at clean. I mean, that was very clean, not very raw. That was, uh, I mean, his rail stayed absolutely perfect throughout this entire ride. I mean, even the exits out of the barrels were nice. And I think that that'll be um, the telltale sign. I mean, this comparatively to the 8.5, you brought the tube ride into it. 
um, and he had the turn. So a lot of variety. Let's see what the judges think, but I feel like it's going to be better than his fir than uh, Leo's first. Beautiful surfing. I will say, uh, I think Sebastian Zietz got something from that Highline heat the other day, the Corona Highline competition. He went out there on a big, bulky twin fin. I think are capable of, of a really big result here. Zeke Lauer and Leonardo Fioravanti. They've got big rail turns, and, and with wave selection like his, they, they could go a long way. Here we go, Felipe up. Beautiful first turn. Always executed oh. with so much speed. Jeez. Oh, deadly approach here from the Brazilian. And he is not done with this wave yet. Just one turn after another. All major manoeuvres. I am chuckling because that was... the feel of it. That was sick. That was sick. ...for the top 34. So we'll catch up with John John Florence out the back. Clean star. Looks like he's back in the pit again. Oh. Beautiful flow from a snap to barrel. There's John's version of a classic grab. Stalls for a wide open cave. Beats the first section. Perfect line to try to run through this one. And he makes it. John's got more room. He'll explode off the roof. And what a heat. But John John Florence, a 9-7 on his last exchange. Joe, we talked about once that tide starts to drop out, we're going to see a lot more barrels coming through. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Watch this turn off the bottom here. Hits the brakes, pulls in. And this barrel just keeps giving, keeps going. Section after section after section. Flying through that next section, it comes out. And even John John didn't know what to do at the end of that wave. And there's the score. And uh, we're not surprised with that at all. Really impressive, John John Florence setting up this cave. And then it just started running through this fast track. All he had to do was just keep his eye on the prize, one of the best barrel riders in the world. Oh. Doesn't matter if it's Pipe or Chopu or Jeffries Bay. In the lead, let's have another look here. Well, this was kind of on the way back out. Kaya Belly missed this one out the back, so Gabriel Medina picking this one up, sort of halfway out. A couple of nice turns, she comes off the bottom. Nice oh, snap right there, you can tell the timing and everything. Right here, bang, clips him in the head, but still drives through that section, driving, driving, driving. Is he gonna come out? Of course he does, Gabriel Medina. Super freak, that is why we love watching Gabriel Medina surf. He's a, uh, well, no matter what it is, Joe, two foot short break. As Dave Reynolds, Andy Irons, there's so many guys that Dale can think back on as we look at John John Florence flying out of the barrel to start. Oh. Big wrap right off the lip line and he'll slam on the brakes again and two arms stalling. Florence reaches for the layback hack. Close through that top turn wrap and John's looking to finish. He'll punch his way off oh. the roof.